Winnie Ruth McKinnell, known simply as Ruth, was born in Oxford, Indiana on January 29, 1905, to a stern Methodist minister and his wife. Ruth grew into a woman the news would describe as the slender blonde young woman who stood just five feet tall. When Ruth was 17, she married a World War I veteran with an addiction to morphine, Dr. William C. Judd, who was nearly 40 years old. He moved Ruth to Mexico where he tried to find work. His emotional and financial instability led to strain in the marriage, as did Ruth's failing health. The couple was living separately by 1930. When Dr. Judd moved to Los Angeles, Ruth ended up in Phoenix, where she became a governess for a wealthy family. It was during this stint that Ruth met John J. Halloran, sometimes referred to as Happy Jack. At 44 years old, Halloran was a successful businessman with many social connections. The story goes that the two would sit on the front porch and talk about their lives, building a deep connection until the two developed a romance in spite of the fact that both were married. Ruth found a position as a medical secretary at the Grunau Clinic, where she met x-ray technician named Agnes Leroy, who went by the name of Anne. Ruth also met Anne's roommate, Hedvig Samuelson, a teacher who went by the name of Sammy. Many sources speculate that the two women were romantic partners. Doctors had diagnosed Sammy with tuberculosis after she and Anne lived in Alaska. The duo moved to Phoenix hoping the dry climate would ease the symptoms of her illness. As fate would have it, Sammy and Anne were also acquaintances of Halloran. In fact, the bungalow they rented belonged to him. The trio likely bonded over the fact they were all working women, earning money in a time when most women weren't. Ruth moved into Sammy and Anne's second street bungalow for a short time, but differences erupted between the group, prompting Ruth to move to her own apartment. Supposedly, all three women had romantic relations with Halloran, at some point leading to some tension. The night of the trunk murders on October 16, 1931, Anne invited Ruth to the bungalow to play bridge. Ruth had moved out about a week prior. According to one of the most common theories, Ruth already had plans to see Halloran that night, so she initially declined. When Halloran didn't show, Ruth went to the bungalow after all. Unfortunately, no clear-cut story has emerged detailing the events as they unfolded. Even Ruth's story changed over multiple confessions, letters, and retellings. One story, story suggested that Ruth, Anne, and Sammy were hanging out when the group began to argue about Halloran's affections. Sammy allegedly pulled out a 25 caliber handgun, shooting Ruth in the left hand. Anne grabbed a nearby ironing board and beat Ruth with it. The problem with this story is that Sammy was apparently bedridden due to her tuberculosis during this time. Could she have really put up a fight over the gun? In another version of the story, Ruth, armed with a gun and a knife, appeared at the home in the middle of the night while both women were asleep. Phoenix police maintained the woman had been shot in their beds. In fact, both mattresses were missing from the home, they claimed. Only one mattress was ever found in a vacant lot with no blood stains. What led to an argument that night? Stories differ. Some say Ruth was jealous that the other women had sexual relationships with Halloran. 
Others believed Sammy and Anne were angry that Ruth had introduced Halloran to a woman who allegedly had syphilis. Regardless of how it happened, Sammy and Anne both died that night. Ruth dismembered Sammy's body, putting her head, torso, and legs in one shipping trunk. Ruth put the upper portion of Sammy's legs in another box. She stuffed Anne into yet another trunk. On October 18, 1931, Ruth showed up at Phoenix's Union Station to take the Golden State Limited passenger train. Her luggage consisted of several large trunks, which stayed with her overnight until the train pulled into Los Angeles Central Station. Unfortunately for Ruth, the putrid stink and fluid spilling out of the trunks attached the attention of a baggage agent, Arthur Anderson. Anderson initially thought Ruth was hauling around a dead deer, which would certainly not be allowed on the train. Anderson indicated that Ruth's trunks should be held at the station and set them aside. When employees at the station asked Ruth to open the fly-covered trunks, she claimed her husband had the key and quickly left. Burton McKinnell, Ruth's brother, was a student at USC when he agreed to pick her up at the train station. He was ignorant of the crime, but upon seeing the trunks, he became suspicious. Eventually, McKinnell dropped Ruth off in Los Angeles with $5. Meanwhile, Anderson called the Los Angeles police and reported the suspicious trunks. Upon arriving, the police officers picked the locks and discovered the bodies, bloody clothing and handwritten letters inside. The search for Ruth began. Exactly what Ruth did after her brother dropped her off is not clear. Apparently, she walked miles to Altadena at some point. She stayed in an Altadena sanitarium called Lavina, a place she had stayed while she was sick. Ruth claimed she stayed in one of the patient rooms by herself with nobody bothering her. Additionally, Ruth apparently walked into a Broadway store and ended up spending a night inside. While there, she wrote a confession letter, but then tried to flush it down the toilet. The letter was allegedly recovered. In the meantime, police officers were not the only people interested in the crime scene back in Phoenix. Neighbors, reporters, and anybody else willing to pay the landlord 10 cents could tour the scene, trampling over evidence. On October 23rd, Ruth surrendered to police at the Alvarez and Moore Funeral Chapel in Los Angeles after her husband put notices in the paper begging her to surrender. She was covered in bruises and sported a gunshot wound to her left hand. The trial of the blonde butcher headlines took on the case of the so-called blonde butcher, or as some referred to her as the trunk murderess.